Hi everybody. Hi everyone and welcome to our section Digital Technologies in Teaching, Learning Foreign Languages. I am Khalil Mosem, the chairman, and I will lead with the help of my colleague Alexandra Sudakova this session. Please, Alexandra. Good afternoon, dear students, dear participants, and dear professor. Today, our conference, we have freshmen, we have first year students. Let's support them. That's their first try. OK, to start, I'd like to introduce this session. Learning foreign languages is a not set today. Every second that passes moved this world forward, which means that something new is created or updated. Automation, artificial intelligence, machine learning, virtual reality or digitized document and other terminologies aren't only words today, but they mean in fact something more which can change our world. The COVID-19 pandemic was only a reason, a reason to innovate uh, in our market, to make every idea become a reality. At the moment, we are talking to each other through platforms. For example, MS Teams, searchers and technicians are improving and writing new programs for effective uses to adapt our demand. This platform is a result from an innovation in the education field. Uh, indeed, the technology updating process intervened even, even in the humanitarian field. In another side, data are collected from pedagogues, methodologists, with sharing content through platforms to create a base with enough information. Evolution or revolution, the idea is the same. A digital world is emerging. This world goes beyond the limits of distance, time, comfort. In this session, we talk about new approaches in education and specifically about digital technologies in foreign languages, teaching, learning. We hope that this session will be very useful to better understand this emergence and how technology and education can complement each other to make foreign languages, teaching, learning more interesting. So uh, our first presentation, I'm pleased to hear about uh, Quizlet at the way of knowledge assessment uh, from Margarita uh, Malteseva. Please. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm happy to see uh, that uh, the guests have already come and be ready to work with our presentation. Can you show clear your presentation? Oh, thank you. Uh, so can you see the presentation? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, dear participants of the conference, professors, students, guests. I'm Margarita Mulisova, senior lecturer of the Department of Foreign Languages in Theory and Practice, Rodean University. Well, and uh, my academic interests concern modular training as the way to develop speaking skills in English. I have the honor to represent my manual, my manual, yes, <laughs> called It's Time to Speak English. Well, uh, today, uh, so we just, um, mm -hmm. Um, we can see uh, that modular training uh, is a, a certain classification of uh, exercises peculiar to each part of the manual is prioritized. Uh, so I can speak about the purpose of this manual. Well, the purpose of the electronic training manual is to develop the skills of speaking, reading, translation, presentations, and improve the lexical and grammatical skills of future specialists for their purpose of international professional communication in English. A special feature of this manual is the use of the method of modular uh, teaching of foreign languages as a system component of the educational process, which allows to build a foreign language training on the principles of problem-based and activity-based approaches, personally-oriented learning of cooperation 
and creative development. So you can see the structure of this manual. The manual consists of four training modules and each module contains four more parts. Module one, life priorities. Module two, we and our society. Module three, what does beautiful mean? And module four, your choice. Okay. <clears throat> um, then the tasks, yes, as I have already mentioned, the tasks of each part of the module become more complicated from simple to more complex. Uh, if you look at the contents, you can see that part one uh, is for the students of level two. Part two contains exercises for level B students. Part three is given for students with B2 levels and part four of each module represents exercises uh, for students of level C1. It doesn't mean that the students uh, can use only some parts. No, the idea is in progress. Well, uh, the tasks of each part of the module become <coughs> more interesting. The first three parts of each module contain authentic texts. The tasks of the first part, and that is first part, Monterosa's key resort, for example, is an advertisement, just advertisement, and we can speak about uh, some very uh, simple tasks. For example, look at the advertisement and answer the questions. Describe the pictures using the following words. Of course, you can find uh, such exercises in the manual. You look at the picture and try to find uh, the answers even in the picture. You start speaking, answering special questions. Part two, we speak about authentic text from a magazine. Um, we are on the, the important topics for the youth. Okay, real life couples. Just we start with different, just easy exercises. Task one, read and translate the text. Then find the most relevant reading title for each paragraph. Put the statements in the logical order. So we've got more tasks and. Uh, for example, task number 13 is uh, uh, quite interesting and becomes interactive. Imagine you are the main character. What could you ask your partner about? Ask more uh, five more questions. Well, uh, uh, sum up the information above and give some advice to the couple. Uh, given pieces of advice, you can uh, start speaking English, of course. Then we we'll speak about part three where you can see <clears throat> an abstract from Martin Eden by Jack London. Each part of the module presents excerpts from the works of fiction by English and American authors, samples of classical and modern literature. And the last task is here, random story, using the following words under the IBC model, I, introduction, B, body, C, Conclusion. The fifth task, just the uh, sorry, not the fifth, the fourth part, face-to-face -face discussion, and the title of the first module is to be or not to be a blogger. Uh, the tasks of each fourth part of the module involve working in small groups and creative participation of everyone. Discussions, debates, presentations. Oh. So, so just uh, not only students, but professors participate in the discussion. Uh, for example, call uh, five successful bloggers. What are the famous for? Uh, we can work uh, together. We can uh, uh, be divided into small groups. Um, uh, and uh, all the students are quite active. I can say that educational and professional situations are an important part of each model of the manual. I can, you can see motivation. It means that each student, each active student, every active student can get extra points for in unit one, five in uh, model uh, two, six points in model uh, three, and even seven points in model um, uh, four. 
see, motivation is given to very active students and uh, they get uh, extra points for their participation. While I can say that life as well as the process of education is being developed uh, uh, in the 21st century very fast. The demand of uh, smart interactive manuals and smart tasks is really high. That's why Quizlet exercises are being prepared to be used as the way of knowledge assessment after each model. They are based on the manual it's time to speak English, presented to the honorable audience before. The student I've been teaching since September 2021, Anastasia Pichtena, is ready to show and explain our future prospectives concerning digital technology and uh, this manual. Thank you for your attention. Anastasia, it is your time to deal with the presentation. We can't hear you. Please turn on your microphone. Anastasia, sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. Great. Good afternoon, dear members of the conference. My name is Pichtin Anastasia, and I am a first year student of the Institute of Foreign Languages. I'm going to represent you information about the study on the subject Quizlet as a way of knowledge assessment. Our material for this study is a manual, It's Time to Speak English, uh, which has just been presented to you. Well, Quizlet is an internet service which suggests students work with language material in a playful way. Nowadays, it is becoming very popular and it can be also used as digital technologies in teaching and learning foreign languages. Even though Quizlet is mostly aimed at vocabulary memorization, it is possible to apply it to various types of tasks. Today, I'm speaking about English knowledge assessment. I was suggested to test a Quizlet model, which consists of 102 general questions related to four texts of the presented manual. In my research, I used the methods of observation and scientific analysis. The purpose of the study is to investigate Quizlet efficiency in terms of knowledge assessment, to identify its weak points, and to give some recommendations on assignments creation to users. To begin with, the structure of the Quizlet model is on the slide. You can see that it consists of two sections, study section and game section. Um, study section includes flashcards, learn, write, spell, and test regimes. Game section uh, offers match and gravity. They are uh, small mini games. As an example, I would like to show you some Quizlet regimes and give some comments about their efficiency. The first is flashcard. Uh, flashcards is a regime which is supposed to help students to get acquainted with the information they will work in a Quizlet module. In this certain case, the option flashcards is inapplicable for knowledge assessment. However, it can help students to assimilate the vocabulary they have been studying and to learn the material better. The next regime is Learn. This regime uh, can be used successfully with yes-no questions only if the settings are correct. A student should select right definition, which is answer yes or no, but not the term, which is a question. Um, otherwise, this regime becomes inappropriate for general questions. The next regime is Spell. Spell regime is impossible to use with yes-no questions uh, since the only way to use it uh, sorry, is uh, um, listening to the questions and typing them in this uh, box. Uh, such way of work can be profitable for the students of levels lower than B2, but it will not provide any information about students' knowledge of the required material. 
The other two regimes are included in game sections. In, in game section, match is um, um, a regime which is a kind of test. Um, uh, you can see that uh, it works properly in relation to yes no questions, but there is a danger that a student uh, will do it all mechanically without any knowledge. I'm sorry to interrupt you. You have one minute left. OK, please. OK, so the next regime is gravity. Um, it is very efficient with yes no questions because uh, uh, it uh, uh, requires uh, um, um, it requires fast response and to, f to deal with it, a student show, should know the information very well. Um, the result has the research has come to such results. You can see that in the uh, scheme and I'd like to talk about weak points and recommendations. First of all, some options of quiz that cannot be applied for different types of tasks, and that's why the teacher should create the models properly and to test the, them all in advance. Next is danger of mechanical accomplishment of the tasks. Uh, I would like to recommend using Quizlet as a supplement to classwork. And the last point is difficult is connected with teamwork. It uh, is not going to be quite, effect, quite efficient uh, in uh, um, when you we need individual results. That's why it is better to avoid teamwork in such cases. Thanks for your attention. That was all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any question? OK, so I will ask maybe a Okay, Alexandra, do you have a question? Okay, yes, I have a question. Anastasia, tell us, please. Uh, so, how many people have participated in your research? How many students has all have already tried this quizlet? What do they think about it? How useful it is? So, okay, um, a lot of uh, people I know use quizlet, and they find it really efficient, uh, uh, especially. The recent time, I hear many good uh, responses about it. But as for this certain module, it uh, was uh, tried only by me because this manual is uh, just presented, so it's uh, a brand new. OK, well, the first one. Yes, you know, Alexia is absolutely right, seeing that she is the first one, just that she was offered and uh, she has come to some conclusions. It means that uh, some um, maybe mistakes have already been found and it is necessary to uh, get rid of them before giving it to all other students. And it has been worked on that my the manual has only uh, been published. It means that uh, we are work on it. We have the, just it. Uh, all the tasks based on the manual are being developed only. And Anastasia just was offered and she has done her best to tell the truth. Thank you very much. That's very mm -hmm. interesting. Thank you very much, Tim. OK, I'm OK with that. Thank you very much for your presentation and your speech. So we can, uh, I'm pleased to hear about uh, the incorporation of digital technologies in multi-strategic vocabulary acquisition from Margarita uh, Miltiseva too. So, please, I'm hearing you. Uh, well, I uh, invite my dear students, first year students, of uh, uh, Chinikova Anastasia, Oh, sorry, Avchinnikov Alesia and uh, Arshak Anastasia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today I would like to draw your attention to the research on the subject the incorporation of digital technologies in multi-strategic vocabulary acquisition. Nowadays, students' academic achievements and subsequent success in their career largely depends on uh, uh, 
on the knowledge that they possess, as well as on their ability to accumulate it. Having to cope with numerous assignments and attend, attend extra classes, students are currently seeking for a way to optimize their time so that they can invest less time resources, yet study productively and achieve desired results. So learners of foreign languages are particularly keen to find and deploy the most effective way of vocabulary acquisition that would enable them to memorize words faster. Having made research into methods of vocabulary acquisition, we found out that implementing several vocabulary learning strategies is considered to be the most effective way to memorize new, uh, new lexical items. Some of these uh, methods are spelling, rehearsal, activation, guessing from context, and oral repetition. Studies and experiments carried out by linguistics scientists prove the efficacy of um, these strategies. Tools that are currently being e learning have also been investigated. The results of the investigation show that students who implement Quizlet achieve better results at memorizing and retaining new vocabulary than those who do not use this application. Quizlet is a free web-based platform that provides digital learning tools such as flashcards, game and study modes. The study aims to evaluate the effectiveness of applying several vocabulary learning strategies in Quizlet simultaneously, incorporating the tools that Quizlet provides in the strategies. To address this aim, the following objectives have been pursued to collect data on different techniques of vocabulary acquisition, to examine the functional characteristics of Quizlet, to conduct an experiment with university students, We have maybe a technical problem with the, your connection. OK, so speaking about uh, the methods, an experiment has been conducted with RUDN first year students who speak English at elementary level. The experiment has been carried out online with the use of the platform Quizlet and Microsoft Teams. The students have been allocated into two groups, the mental group and the control one. Both groups have been given the same learning objective, to memorize 10 words within one study session. During the study session, the students in both groups have been required to utilize three vocabulary learning strategies. The experimental group have created flashcards, spell the words after pronunciation, and played a vocabulary game. The control group, meanwhile, have been asked to write the words down with their definitions, spell the words repeatedly, and uh, also make up sentences with them. At the end of the study session, an online test has been given to the students in order to assess their knowledge of the words. In the test, the experimental group have demonstrated better knowledge of the words than the control group. The mean vocabulary gains of the former are 95%, while the same statistical indicator equates 73% in the control group. The results of the experiment enable us to conclude that Quizlet has increased the productivity of the implemented vocabulary learning strategies, and it has helped the students to better memorize and retain the new words. Proven efficacy, Quizlet is highly recommended to be employed in the educational process. It is worth noting that to memorize and assimilate studied lexical items, it is necessary to use several tools provided by Quizlet. Finally, the practice of revising the flashcards created in Quizlet shouldn't be neglected, as it plays a pivotal role in the retention of information. To summarize, by dint of studying the collected data, we discovered that 
application of several vocabulary learning strategies, as well as of the platform Quizlet, enhances the efficiency of vocabulary acquisition. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. We're ready to answer your questions. Thank you very much. So tell us, please, you have chosen uh, the level A2. Am I right? Yeah. Right. yeah. OK, uh, what do you think about developing uh, the same strategy for B1, B2? Because uh, most of our students, they study B1 level. Let me answer your question. You're quite right uh, that uh, in Rodin University, most of students uh, have a B1 level of uh, English. And um, as I said, uh, if we try to continue this uh, study, we would choose uh, more words. So in our, um, uh, in our research, we used um, uh, 10 words and uh, gave them uh, for our students and uh, speaking about B2 students, it uh, would be better to give them about uh, 50 words as their level is higher. So I think that the idea is great, the idea of continuing the project. So thank you. Thank you. also think so, but it's great to continue. Any question? OK, maybe I will ask a question. I hear for, um, maybe in the past uh, it was um, easier uh, to memorize words, vocabulary maybe, because we didn't have a smartphone to uh, save them. So how with let uh, can uh, help, help students to memorize vocabulary? Well, it is developed in such a way that helps students memorize words by games and by engaging the student in the process of learning. So the problem with learners nowadays is that uh, it is hard for them to concentrate because they have so many things to tackle. But so, uh, the games that uh, Quizlet provides uh, are uh, designed to make students concentrate and to really learn. And so I think uh, in this way Quizlet helps uh, students uh, learn more words and retain them afterwards. Oh, I see. It's uh, a sort of maybe motivation. Mm -hmm. As so, well. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, so the third person will be Yekaterina Shaykovska. Uh, I want to hear about Instagram as a platform for developing speaking skills of students in a practical course of English language. So please, I'm here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to have the opportunity to address such a distinguished audience. My name is Katherine Tchaikovska, and I'm a first year student of Rudin Institute of Foreign Languages. I'd like to present to you our research work, Instagram as a platform for developing speaking skills of students in a practical course of English language. It's a common fact that in the modern world, social networks have become an integral part of the life of people, especially the life of adolescents and students. The development of information sciences and active processes of informatization of modern society has led to the informatization of educational activities, resulting in which social networks have become increasingly used in field of education. The main goal of introducing social network into the educational process is to develop students' intellectual skills in the modern information society and improve the quality of education. The main task of the new educational standards is forming a new style of thinking, thanks to which students will be able to study independently, uh, set themselves some educational issues and find ways to solve them using the entire toolkit of information technology. The main goal of the research is to find the ways 
to develop students' speaking skills with the help of social networks such as Instagram. The research is based on theoretical and empirical methods. To begin with, social network in the conventional sense is um, a platform uh, to communicate with other people, for dating, for creating social relations between people who have similar interests or fun connections, also as well as for entertainment, work and study. There are four types of social networks. First one is professional social networks created for job seekers and employers. Second one is block networks, then dating sites and sites for finding people. According to the recent statistics for 2021, the most popular social networks in the world among users are Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. Uh, talking about the last two, the, the first two, um, they became a part of the educational process in students' life much earlier um, in contrast to the Instagram platform, which only recently began um, to be considered a platform for conducting educational activities. Initially, uh, this social network was created as a space to share various photos and keep uh, in touch with other people. Um, but now Instagram is one of the most popular platforms for doing business, developing blogs about daily life, care and beauty, also placing advertising campaigns uh, for brands and maintaining educational accounts. The social network has a number of advantages. Firstly, Instagram has an interface that is quite understandable to the layman. It's easy to understand how to use it. Secondly, there are a variety of functions. Thanks to the Instagram, people can make publications with different pictures, read others' publications, comment on it, chat with others in the direct message section. Uh, also, one of the most commonly used features of Instagram is the ability to post stories. These are publications um, that are up to 15 seconds long and last 24 hours. In stories, users share their um, every minute of their life and very often advertising publications, educational information and entertainment content. Like uh, any other social network, Instagram is an excellent information space for students' self-development. The many functions of the platform allow students to learn more and more information every day, which leads to students developing comprehensively, improving their knowledge, broadening their horizons, of course, and finding new interests for themselves. Despite the many positive aspects of this platform, like many other social networks, Instagram can negatively affect students. This usually happens due to the fact that modern students spend most of their free time on social networks and this leads to a simplification of the language, um, a decrease of the vocabulary, uh, the replenishment of the vocabulary with a slow way board. In order to avoid the negative uh, impact of Instagram on the students, this platform makes it possible to develop speaking skills by using the previously mentioned story section. They will help students open up to the audience, uh, thereby overcoming the barriers of embarrassment from public speaking. Also important is uh, the fact that students develop their speaking skills in the process of oral narration on any topic. Moreover, gaining confidence when speaking in everyday life decreases the number of grammatical errors and speech becomes clear, concise and expressive allowing others uh, to understand the speaker's message quickly. Especially for students that are learning foreign languages, speaking practice through stories uh, is the most crucial task to achieve the desired result. The actual practice of speaking on Instagram leads to positive changes. The student's um, articulation becomes more active, intonation rules are observed, skills of combining the emotional component with speech are developed, and also active gestures are also connected. We have conducted a survey among first year students to demonstrate that Instagram is a multifunctional and convenient platform. The total number of participants is uh, 370 students of the People's Friendship University of Russia in the age category from 18 up to 17 years. 
In the first chart, you can see the answers to the question about the frequency of use of the social network Instagram. The analysis suggests that more than the respondents spend about three, four hours on Instagram, 39% spend less than an hour, 8% of students don't use Instagram at all, and only a few students use it more than seven or 12 hours. In the second chart, more than half of respondents reporting uh, that Instagram can be used for self education In the third chart, the figure varies considerably. More than 80% of the respondents are sure that Instagram can help study foreign languages in different ways. The analysis suggests that students are interested in studying with the usage of Instagram social network and they are ready to try and practice the capabilities of this platform. According to, the, to these uh, results, we have developed special exercises to increase speaking skills using Instagram. All these exercises are devoted to developing speaking skills when there is no possibility to study offline. We offered students um, some exercises, for example, this is your first day at university, but you're at home going to join the online meeting because of the epidemiology consideration in the world. You have no idea who your group mates are, what hobbies do they have. You have ambiguous feelings. You are worried and excited at the same time. You have four stories. It's about one minute to introduce yourself. You have to mention your name, age, occupation, hobbies, and three qualities that make you special. As an example, one of the students posted several stories completing this task. After we had received her feedback, she has mentioned that it was an unusual experience. From the educational point of view, she was surprised to find out how hard to organize the ideas and thoughts in a logical sequence. To do this task, she started recording five times. Other students uh, have admitted that they started analyzing their speech and grammatical structures Understanding that many friends, groupmates, international students and acquaintances will see them. The study provides the basis for the further development of this topic. Now uh, I'd really like to show you uh, the video of this girl. Hi there, I'm Sophie. I'm 20 years old. Uh, this year... Can you hear the sounds? Tell me, please. Yeah, but it yeah, yeah, but okay. Here I came to Moscow. Hi there, I'm Sophie. I'm 20 years old. Uh, this year I came to Moscow and entered the People's uh, Friendship University of Russia. So um, I'm the first year student of uh, philology faculty and I'm studying linguistic here. Uh, talking about my interests, I'm really into sport. I have been doing karate for uh, five years, um, but when I came to Moscow, there is no time for my trainings and for intensive workouts. So sometimes I take uh, dance uh, last lessons in the inter club. Um, it's located near to the campus uh, where I live now. Uh, so talking about my greatest strength, I think the first one is that I'm um, keen on doing volunteering work and uh, participating in community activities. It's really, really gives me the sense of pleasure. So it was uh, an example of a student doing our exercises. We have some more, but uh, for now it's all I wanted to say to you. Thank you very much for your attention and I would be pleased to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you very much. We are waiting. Uh, okay, we have a question from uh, Ruslan Ragim. Uh, yes, Ruslan. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you uh, to say thank you for your presentation. It was qu uh, quite an interesting, and um, I wanted to ask you uh, a question. Uh, when we are going to use uh, uh, an Instagram or other social media, uh, we have such a problem uh, when we uh, we are we distracted by watching some news or something else, and um, 
uh, we, we are not going to study. We are pay much attention to other things. And uh, could you give us uh, some advice how to cope uh, with uh, to to cope with that problem? Uh, what should uh, students do with that for uh, studying, but not uh, answering the messages or reading news or something else? Yeah, I think it's a good question. So please, yeah, Ekaterina. I agree with you. It's a good question. Thank you. Uh, to be honest, uh, I'm really hard working person, so I don't know this problem, but um, I can give you advice. Uh, you just have to um, to raise your Focus, inner power, uh, to raise your interest, um, probably to spend more time on studying and uh, maybe you want to create sensible. Probably, yeah. Well, to focus in our study. You just need to understand for yourself what is more important to study, to know more uh, interesting things, or just to watch entertainment content and uh, spend your time in nowhere. So I guess it's uh, it will be like this. Maybe is the question is, is this question is about a self uh, control, control, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think yes. that it is. Self-control, self-discipline. It's really individual question. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I have a question. If thank uh, you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I have a question too. Uh, I heard uh, about Instagram. It will be maybe. Uh, it will, in the future, maybe it will be not free. So uh, can this affect uh, student motivation? Um, to be honest, uh, I don't think that it uh, can affect students' motivation because if student uh, is motivated, uh, nothing can uh, can decline his uh, path of uh, studying. Uh, and I guess he will pay uh, money if it uh, if he needs to, or he will find another way to study. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation, your speech. OK, so. Uh, Konstantin Garanin. Uh, yes. OK, uh, so uh, I'm pleased to hear about Telegram as a social platform of distant learning for preparing students for the Cambridge first exam, FCE. OK, so first, can you see me? OK, yeah, uh, thanks, wait okay. a second, I'll uh, present my presentation. Can you see the presentation? Yeah, everything is OK. You can start. OK, so uh, good afternoon, dear members uh, on the, of the board. My name is Konstantin. And uh, I'm a first year student of the Institute of Foreign Languages. And uh, now I'm going to tell you about my research. So let's begin. Uh, our research project concerns Telegram as a social platform of uh, decent learning for preparing students for the Cambridge first exam. Uh, in our presentation, we'll, we'll briefly outline the key theoretical points and then proceed to the presentation of our findings. <clears throat> a modern human is surrounded by various information. The linguistic stops being just far science about language. And uh, nowadays it is a part of society because our language determines our life. There is still no single system or a plan for online learning. And uh, in many schools and university students use various sites, programs and uh, messengers for learning English. So the typicality of this project is to examine the application and the usefulness of the Telegram platform and transferring the educational resources and uh, interaction with students uh, in higher educational institutions. Uh, the first part of research is focused on studying the roots of distance learning. Uh, distance learning is a form of education, which is the interaction of a teacher and uh, a student at the distance, containing all the components of the educational process and implemented using Internet technologies 
and the other means that provides interactivity. The history of the emergence of distance education begins in the 1700s. In, uh, 17, in 1728, Caleb Phillips submitted an advertisement uh, to a Boston newspaper to recruit students to study a shorthand anywhere uh, in the country by exchanging letters. Since then, the process of distance learning has been improving and uh, new technologies have been introduced. Distance education of the Russian Empire existed only in the format of an external course uh, for a long time. And uh, the flow rising of remote education began in the first year of Soviet authority. Uh, in the 1920s, as a part of the illiteracy program, self-education manuals were published in a huge numbers and others. And uh, in the 1970s, uh, in the Soviet Union, there were 16 entirely correspondence universities and uh, 46 specialized secondary schools. Uh, unfortunately, one of the main reasons for the active introduction of distance learning is the coronavirus. However, at the same time, the quarantine period gave a push to develop uh, to development of distance learning. Many applications were actively improving during this time and uh, new functions were added to them. Uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, against the background of various instant messengers and other applications, Telegram stands out a lot. Uh, it has many valuable features to help students to learn English and prepare for Cambridge exam. Uh, this empirical study is based on the survey of 116 students of People's Friendship University of Russia, recognizing students' perception of social media and mobile devices through collaborative learning, interactivity with peers, teachers, and its significant impact on students' academic performance. Uh, one of the essential functions in, of Telegram is adding bots. For example, in business, this applies to successful branding and continuous audience engagement. Uh, bots can also significantly speed up learning process. Uh, Cross-platform is the next feature. The application is available on devices. It can be launched through a browser, web version, and a desktop version. Uh, the third equally important function is the ability to create channels and groups and uh, uniting people at once. Uh, moreover, the last function of Telegram is its versatility and the fact that it is possible to send messages to other users and exchange photos and videos in the application. Uh, in Telegram, students can send multiple files up to one and a half gigabytes and uh, arrange polls, make video calls. Uh, in order to improve our research, we conducted a survey in which we found out the attitude of people towards the Telegram and the possibility of learning on it. Uh, in the very first question, we clarified how much time the respondent spends on Telegram on average. As you can see in the diagram below, about 40% of respondents spend on average less than 30 minutes a day in Telegram. Uh, next, we asked uh, questions about using the Telegram functions. Most of the respondents often exchange messages with other users, uh, video and audio files, and also watch various channels. Uh, further, we asked about what content the respondents prefer to enjoy in Telegram. The most popular types of content uh, are informational, entertaining, educational, and user-generated. Uh, all percentage ratios can be seen below. Uh, next, we asked if respondents use the functions of both channels and groups in Telegram. Uh, and in the end, we asked a couple of questions about uh, Telegram as a platform for learning and preparing for the Cambridge exam. Uh, about a third of respondents believe that it is possible to study English and also prepare for international exam in Telegram. And another part of the respondents uh, don't think about this question. Uh, and uh, about 18% of respondents agreed to use Telegram as a platform for preparing for the Cambridge exam. And also about a half of the respondents are interested in this topic. So these factors have let uh, create a special Telegram channel, 65th minute, where students do exercises daily. And uh, now I'm going to tell you about this channel. Uh, we have chosen that name because we are those five prestigious minutes that you always need. Uh, 
So, uh, several exam tasks are available on this Telegram channel, which are made to prepare a student for the Cambridge English exam. Uh, at the moment in this channel, students can only do tasks from the reading part. Uh, several tasks are available to them, which shouldn't take much time. Uh, and uh, now the Telegram channel is being finalized. Students actively uh, visit this channel and uh, complete assignments and complete assignments. And uh, in the nearest future, we are going to develop this channel and uh, add new tasks of varying difficulty to this channel. Uh, and uh, here you can see some students' feedbacks. Uh, the views are positive and uh, the channel members like this type of tasks, uh, which don't require a lot of time. Uh, additionally, interactivity with teachers, peers and uh, online knowledge sharing behavior has seen a significant impact on students engagement, consequently impacting students academic performance. Uh, grounding to this finding, it would be valuable to mention that using uh, the online platform Telegram for collaborative learning facilities students to be more creative, dynamic and research oriented. Uh, thus, we can conclude that Telegram can become the leading platform for learning English and preparing for Cambridge exam. And uh, I think I th thank the board and all participants here for their attention. And now I'm ready for your questions. OK, we have a question from Ruslan. Thank you, Ruslan, or again for your activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, my question is, um, I'm interested uh, in your boat, uh, FC or CAE boat, as you mentioned. And can you, can you give more detail how it works and especially how it helps with listening? Because I am I can't uh, uh, understand how it helps with this. Uh, for example, uh, you uh, you write uh, that uh, uh, the things that you heard or something, how it works with it. Uh, and if it's possible, can you give us uh, the link of this bot or uh, how to, how can we uh, use it? Yes, uh, this. Thank you. OK, uh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Well, uh, when I was uh, uh, preparing for this uh, presentation, I was uh, watching uh, various Telegram bots. So uh, if you have enough skills in programming, you can write a special bot who can send you uh, various audio files, for example, uh, dialogues and uh, you can you can listen them and uh, do them. Uh, furthermore, you can do various tasks, do various writing tasks and uh, send them to the bot and uh, he will check them and uh, show you and show you your answers. Uh, and uh, I can mm, I can show you one bot of Telegram. Uh, I don't uh, remember his name, uh, but the name of this bot is something like uh, Bot Bob. Uh, so every day you can connect with them, and uh, he can send you various uh, tasks. Uh, he can send you various uh, words. So you can learn them and also he can send you various videos and audio files too. Thank you for your answer. OK, thank you very much. Alexandra, you want to say something? Yeah, we're going to share the link. You can okay. join our channel. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing the link. So the next one is uh, Swan Yu Huan and Shaobo, Digital Technologies in Foreign Language Teaching. So please. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Наш презентацию. In just a second, we will show your presentation. Maybe it's better to send this presentation, Alexandra.
说没事，别紧张。你能开开吗？不开，我我能。Okay, can you see this presentation? Not yet. Okay. So this presentation. Okay, you can start, please. Здравствуйте. Извините, я буду по-русски. Без проблем, конечно. Да, конечно. Мы вас слушаем. Всем здравствуйте. Спасибо за презентацию аспиранты. Немного знания добавила. Меня зовут Сун Юшен, и наша статья называется Digital Technologies in Foreign Language Teaching. Эту статью написали моя коллега Шобо и я. И в то же время я хотела бы поблагодарить Марина Георгиевна за ее бескорыстную помощь и руководство, а также учителя английского языка. Они да без вас, без вас за помощь нам в изучении английского языка. И дальше наша статья. Наша статья будет состоять примерно из четырех частей Foreign Language Teaching, Distance Education, Digital Technologies and Educational Methods. И дальше, что касается обучения, Иностранным языком статья в основном посвящена преподаванию английского языка. Английский язык является наиболее широко используемым языком в мире. Изучение английского языка как иностранного позволяет варяет людям из разных стран хорошо а, общаться. Поэтому английского а, образования и изучение английского языка всегда были актуальной темой. И, да, и да, дальше там презентация. И еще дальше. И из-за срежного воздействия эпидемии дистанционное образование теперь используется крупными уни университетами. По сравнению с традиционными методами обучения, дистанционное обучение имеет свои преимущества. Его главное Преимущество заключен, заключается в том, что он преодавляет ограничения времени, пространства и местоположения, делая учебную работу учителей и обучения студентов более гибкими предоставляя студентам больше возможностей для обучения, недостатки дистанционного образования постепенно выявляются. Об этом мы расскажем в нашей статье. И, и дальше дистанционное образование – обеспечивает основную для развития цифровых технологий в сфере образования. Цифровые технологии были гибко использованы в разных предметах. 
Конечно, его роль в обучении иностранным языкам даже лучше. Учителя иностранных языков могут использовать больше сетевых ресурсов, чтобы показать учащимся про изношение и про критическое использование языка. Например, проигрывая видео. Гибкость онлайн обучения также появляет на дисциплину обучения, потому что отсутствие школьного контроля изоваряет учащим, отвлекается от учебных задач. И э, существует э, не, э, множество методов обучения с использованием цифровых технологий. Каждый э, преподаватель может выбрать для обучения наиболее привычный метод обучения, а также удобнее и быстрее э, передавать знания учащимся. Учителя могут использовать также инструменты, как браншенты и компьютеры, для более быстрого установления связи с учащимся. В дополнение к отображениям обуч... обучающим инст... инструментам есть также Teams, Zoom и так далее, с которыми мы наиболее знакомы. И все, спасибо вам. Okay. Спасибо большое за презентацию, за все то, что вы говорили. Вопрос будет маленький, наверное, такой у меня, несложный. Digital Technologies, то есть я так понимаю, что это цифровые да, технологии, они да. распространялись больше после COVID -а или до COVID? -а? И почему так после COVID, -а, вы думаете? Mm. Можно Еще раз. Обязательно после да. COVID. Но у нас же после ковида все, все это произошло, да? Почему? Как думаем? Ну, Из-за чего это все связано с чем? Ну ладно, давайте не будем. Все нормально, отлично, добро. Мы все поняли. Хорошо, спасибо большое за презентацию. И переходим уже к последнему участнику. Да? Елена. Kokanova. I'm glad and I'm pleased to hear about uh, project work in translator training, professional adaptation and information technology. Dear colleagues, good afternoon. Thank you for your interesting reports. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I hope you can see the presentation. Yeah, it's okay. Yes, it's okay. You can start. Well, thank you. My name is Alexandra Epimakova, and let me present the report Project Work in Translated Training, Professional Adaptation and Information Technology by the Teachers of Department of Translation Technology and Practice at EKM West, Northern Arctic Federal University, Akangelsk. Project work is considered an essential part of practice-oriented professional training. Project disciplines and modules are introduced as a part of bachelor's and master's programs curricula throughout Russian universities. Projects usually vary according to the program and level. Sometimes younger students start by joining more experienced groups and become more and more independent with each project. In fact, project work in translator training had been used long before this term appeared. For example, in 1941, 1945 students and trainees of Military Institute of Foreign Languages worked with real-war documents. 
and their translations were used together with those made by professionals. The experience of this practice-oriented approach and attention to applied subjects developed under extreme conditions can be analyzed and used in translator training. It is admitted that fulfilling a real translation project instead of working with training texts helps students update and integrate acquired knowledge and skills. It develops their creative abilities, teaches responsibility and independence. It also enhances teamwork. And it is important to know that project-based approach together with authors' courses is believed essential for practice-oriented teaching. The objective of this study is to analyze the experience of project work fulfilled by the students who study translation at Northern Arctic Federal University in Akangelsk and evaluate their efficiency for professional development of the students. At Northern Arctic Federal University, the current bachelor's degree program in translation and interpreting is based on federal state educational standard and now for independently established standards. In both cases, project technology is introduced when students are at their second year of studies. But th by this time, they have already learned the basic structure of a translation project fulfilled by a translation company. This is due to the fact that professional training courses and professional adaptation content are provided to these students by the teachers of the Department of Translation Technology and Practice at AKM West. This joint department opened in 2018 as a result of cooperation between a federal university and a translation company interested in sharing its expertise. The department aims at supporting translation training during all the years of studies. Professionals introduce students to such topics as new trends at the translation market, structure of an LSP company, translation management, full-time and freelance translators, salaries, prices, etc. Another aspect is professional translation technology. Students are taught to use CAD tools and machine translation engines in their work. The department participates actively in developing the content of these subjects and evaluation materials. The experience gained in 2018-2019 uh, was taken into account when developing NAFU independently established standards in linguistic, bachelor level. This document corresponds to the Russian professional standard in translation, elaborated with the direct participation of ECM West representatives in cooperation with other participants of the translation industry. As you can see, the curriculum based on NAFU independently established standards offers more project work opportunities. There is more practical training, and each part of practical training has the form of a project aimed at translating a text or a set of texts, creating a glossary, etc. Most often, these are group projects where students have their own roles, project manager, translator, editor, etc. They start by creating a project charter where they define objectives and constraints of the project, the main stakeholders, risks, benefits, time limits, responsibilities of team members, etc. In the end, the groups discuss the achieved goals and assess project quality. Independently established standards in linguistics for the master level were elaborated in 2020. Master's program Computer Assisted and Machine Translation Technology opened in 2021. It is aimed at training translation and localization professionals able to work with specialized software. At this level, project technology is applied for translation training and research. You can see uh, some of the subjects on the slide. Projects are created each time taking into account two factors, the demand for volunteer translation expressed by the university departments or its partners and the student's qualification. So the projects vary according to the student's experience and acquired skills. Among the fulfilled projects are translation of documents and exhibition levels for NAFU History Museum, translation of the university academic writing standard for foreign students, translating articles for a site devoted to digital humanities, system block site, subtitling films for the International Film Festival Arctic Open, 
etc. Working languages are Russian, English, French and German. These projects can be described in terms of volunteer translation, defined as translation conducted by people exercising their free will to perform translation work, which is not remunerated, which is formally organized and for the benefit of others. Their results are used in several ways. Translations of texts and articles devoted to new technology in translation is used for teaching groups that cannot work with them in the regional younger students, students of non-linguistic specialties. Articles translated from French and German become accessible to those who do not have these languages as their first or second foreign language. It enriches their research work. Some of the translations are published online. Uh, you can see an example on the slide and thus contribute to the promotion of knowledge in the field of translation innovations. Projects for NAFA History Museum include the translation of documents from personal archives of the literary critic Alexander Mikhailov from French into Russian, translation of the museum permanent exhibition from Russian into English, subtitling of films devoted to the museum's research results. Subtitling films for the International Film Festival Arctic Open is a complex and long lasting project that dates back to 2018. This International Film Festival of the Arctic Countries is a socio-cultural project in the Arkhangelsk region. It is held annually in December and hosts films from Russia, Denmark, Canada, Sweden and other countries. The film program includes full-length fiction, th short films, animation, documentaries and thanks to volunteer translation from English into Russian and Russian into English, these films can be discovered by a broader audience. Students aspire to get feedback and see how the results of their work help people learn and discover. It motivates them to do their best in translation and helps develop self-confidence. Translation projects can also provide research materials for students' graduation thesis or publications. Firstly, it allows promoting applied research work. Secondly, when analyzing their translation, students see it at a different angle and assess translation strategies. Uh, you can see some examples of the papers devoted to translation projects or based on them. Project work disciplines and modules under the supervision of AKM representatives follow the structure of translation projects within the company. Translation software tools, CAD tools or their academic versions are used in order to control the workflow and assign tasks for project managers, translators and editors. Machine translation modules allow practicing post-editing machine translation and enhancing project performance. Being mentored by the representatives of the professional community, students can acquire skills of using these instruments most efficiently. By the end of their studies, bachelor's and master's degree students have experience of managing a translation project fulfilling translation, editing and post-editing, creating glossaries with the help of several CAD tools. Uh, they usually don't have difficulty in working with CAD tools and thus they meet the requirements of the modern translation industry. Project work is an important part of translator training, both at bachelor's and master's levels. It helps develop students' hard skills and soft skills necessary for, pro for their professional activity. Due to their work with professionals, um, students know how to apply for a translation company or start a freelance career. They are also aware of different career prospects. A graduate in translation can become not only a translator, interpreter, but also, for example, a post editor or project manager. And as projects are complex and consist of many aspects often fulfilled by different persons, they allow to integrate a range of technical means including translation tools and digital instruments. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, we are waiting uh, questions, please. So I have a question. Can I ask it? It's about maybe uh, artificial intelligence. Can a machine learning with artificial intelligence or you know, technology take the job from translators? Well, in fact, it's a very 
interesting question that is uh, really debated a lot, but um, perhaps it will take the job of translators who don't really pay much attention to their training, but there will always be good translators and human translation is always better. And even, even if a translator uses artificial intelligence, machine translation, uh, CAD tools, etc., cetera, uh, it is uh, the human translator who controls the process. So even, uh, even with the development of these technologies, they will help human translators, but they will never replace them. Well, that's what we believe. But, but translation tools can really help to work better, to work faster and uh, enhance translation quality. Mm -hmm. Is uh, a sort of maybe a machine learning to assist maybe a uh, translator. Absolutely. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. I hope you, you are right and uh, we will be uh, always uh, the best in this area. OK, so uh, if we don't have questions, um, we can give you a little conclusion about what we hear heard in this session. So I'm think I am thinking that uh, it is very useful to talk about technology and um, education. We are seeing that how much uh, technology is affecting uh, our uh, education and maybe our methods uh, can be uh, changed or replaced. Uh, it's a good thing to talk about digital technologies because we are seeing that how much uh, document and uh, papers uh, are no more needed. So we are uh, digit we, we can digitize everything today. You understand uh, to uh, communicate uh, throughout communication platforms like MS Teams, Skype, and uh, Moodle platform, uh, and throughout game. But like Quizlet and other uh, programs. I'm thinking that you know, the, the new uh, innovation in this education uh, area or field is about uh, new materials and programs. So I wish uh, that uh, we understand that we are uh, uh, in this um, maybe um, world uh, like an emerge an, an emergement. Uh, or an emergence uh, for a digital world. So thank you very much, and I hope that it was very useful to all of us. Any question? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I hope to see you another in, in another conference because it was very helpful and uh, very uh, tasty, like <laughs> like a good uh, information. We can use it for our future. Have a good. Thank uh, you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Goodbye. And goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for your participation. Dorian, пожалуйста, приходите еще раз. Thank you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.